Welcome to worship at Camrose United Church for Sunday, February the 19th, 2023. My name is Helen Reed, and it is my privilege to serve this community of faith as their minister. In the spirit of the living God, who reminds us to love all of God's people, we remember that when settlers came, they were met by others who were already here, already knew these lands, already lived rich and full lives based on ancient and proud cultures. This is the land we share. Camrose United Church is located on land encompassed by Treaty 6 that was a traditional meeting grounds, gathering place, and traveling route to the Cree, Assiniboine, Ojibwe, Soto, Anishinaabe, Inuit, Blackfoot, Métis, Dene, and Nakota Sioux. I acknowledge all the many First Nations, Métis and Inuit, whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries. And I affirm my commitment to the principles and actions of reconciliation. We begin our worship time together with the lighting of the Christ candle. We light this candle aware of God's presence around us, among us, within us. And I invite us to take a moment of silence as we prepare to welcome God into our community. Welcome to this space where we journey together to hear and see and understand how God lifts us up and inspires us. Welcome to this time where we find ourselves learning about arduous journeys, tough journeys that bring us closer to God. Welcome to this place where we seek the wisdom of God where we open our hearts to be as close to God as we can be. May today's faith journey bring us into God's transforming presence. Do we dare to journey together? Yes, for God is here. Be still and be still and that I am God, I am God. Be still and know, Be still and that know I am that I am God. Be still and know, Be still and know that I am God, I am God. Be still and know, Be still and know. Why the mountaintop? Today we hear stories of what has become known as the transfiguration story. Jesus led some disciples, not all of them, up to the top of a mountain. He picked three of the many who were following them and offered them an experience that couldn't be explained or understood if you didn't see it. In fact, Jesus said, Don't even try to explain this yet. 
The time will come when it will make sense. So why the mountaintop? Why not in a synagogue or beside the lake or by the village well? There are a number of symbolic ways that mountains are perceived in the Bible. Climbing the highest mountains would get you closer to God. There was, at the time, nothing higher. Noah found himself and the ark resting on the mountains of Ararat, finding a place of safety from an enormous storm. Moses received instructions from God when he boldly went into the mountains to meet the holy in bushes and clouds. He was also able to glimpse a future that he built but wouldn't experience when God took him on a mountain to the edge of the desert. Abraham was challenged on a mountaintop by God. David sought refuge in the Mount of Olives. In this time of turmoil, when Jesus could see danger coming, he invited his most trusted disciples into change. Taking faithful disciples to a place that took time and work to get there, to come as close to the holy as you could get, was a gift of the sacred. This soul-tending moment was to give them courage and faith for the journey ahead. When they followed Jesus, they encountered something unexplainable. They saw Jesus being changed before their eyes. They watched God do something that they had never considered possible. I would guess that in this moment of watching God transform the teacher, the followers were also changed. They couldn't possibly have not been changed by this experience. On this mountain, a known symbol of their faith stories, they encountered the God of safety, of guidance, of forward thinking, of shelter, of all-embracing, inspiring faith. And that is why Jesus took them there, to a place where they would be inspired and know the power of God as their ancestors did. As we hear this story of moving to a place that connects with the holy in ways that are unexplainable, I wonder if we are ready for the holy to shine down on us, to fill us with something that we can't put words to, but fill us with all that we need for the journey ahead. Bathe me in your light, O God of all Creator. Let it shine upon my soul with healing and with grace. Be to me a beacon bright through shadows of light. Wounding, showing me the way to live in faith in your embrace. Bathe me in your love, O source of awe and wonder. Help me walk the same. to the musings of your presence, drinking from the well of hope that brings the heart release. Bathe me in your grace, O one of spirits, 
Please join your hearts and voices with mine in the prayer for awareness and God's grace. O oh God, we remember those times we have not followed your call. When we have thought the cross too heavy and it's way too rough for us. When we have walked a more comfortable path and hidden the way of love by doing so. We remember those times we have not followed your word. When the word has been so honest with us, convicting our way of living. When we have reinterpreted it to suit our way and hidden the truth of the gospel by doing so. We remember those times we have not shared your table when we have kept your goodness to ourselves, tipped the scales of justice in our favor, and left folk hungry in doing so. We remember the times we have hidden your light, when we have lived in the shadows, comfortably remaining hidden by the darkness, embarrassed to be seen as yours. Forgive us, God. For the times when we didn't see your presence around us. For the times when we refused to hear your message and trust your truth. For the times when we have tried to make you serve us instead of wholeheartedly serving you. Forgive us, God for all of those times. Hear these words of assurance. Through the clouds, with wisdom we will never understand, God comes to us. We are blessed when we follow and take the opportunity to grow with God, to follow God's direction, living God's love. God's heart words hold us up, guide us on new paths, remind us that we are loved and led by the holy. God is with us. We are never alone. Thanks be to God. Today's reading is from Matthew 17, 1 to 9 from the Common English Bible. Jesus' transformation. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and brought them to the top of a very high mountain. He was transformed in front of them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with Jesus. Peter reacted to all of this by saying to Jesus, Lord, it's good that you're here. If you want, I'll make three shrines, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, look, a bright cloud overshadowed them. A voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I dearly love. I'm very pleased with him. Listen to him. Hearing this, the disciples fell on their faces, filled with awe. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, don't tell anybody about the vision until the human one is raised from the dead. 
The second reading is Peter 1, 16 to 21, from the message. We weren't, you know, just wishing on a star when we laid the facts out before you regarding the powerful return of our master, Jesus Christ. We were there for the preview. We saw it with our own eyes. Jesus resplendent with light from God the Father as the voice of majestic glory spoke. This is my son, marked by my love, focus of all my delight. We were there in the holy mountain with him. We heard the voice out of the heaven with our very own ears. We couldn't be more sure of what we saw and heard. God's glory, God's voice. The prophetic word was confirmed to us. You'll do well to keep focusing on it. It's the one light you have in a dark time as you wait for daybreak and the rising of the morning star in your hearts. The main thing to keep in mind here is that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of private opinion. And why? Because it's not something concocted in the human heart. Prophecy resulted when the Holy Spirit prompted men and women to speak God's word. Scripture is our song for the journey, passed on from generation to generation to guide and inspire. God calls us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. We have just travelled through the season of Epiphany, a time of unfolding, of noticing light and dark, of following stars, of following Jesus. This Sunday marks an end of this season with a burst of light and energy that we may need in the Lenten days ahead. On this mountaintop where bright God light and shadow show us God's holy unseen, but always with us presence. We meet faith communities across time because people of many generations have been there. They've been there with their stories. They've seen the unexplainable way that God can transform faithful people. They've been the people who wanted to protect and contain the past. They've been the people who couldn't find words to describe an unknown future. They've been the people invited by God to hear, to listen, 
to follow. And now we are here, invited by God to come into a holy space to hear, to listen, to follow. Maybe where God takes us won't look or sound like we thought it would, and maybe we too will want to put walls and doors around the old prophets to keep them together. But God invites us into this moment to transform, to change, to open ourselves up to hearing how and where we are to trust and follow Jesus next. The words transfigured is a Greek verb, metamorpho. There is another place in the New Testament where that verb, an action word, suggests changes deep within a person. The changes within Jesus, within the disciples, were more than surface changes. They were soul changes. They changed the way they saw the world and interacted with the world. They, well, the disciples, weren't expecting this. But God happens in the most unexpected moments. This was an unexplainable, unexpected shift in how they would share God's way. They had to be brave enough to step away from that moment and trust that God and Jesus' directions would take them to the next adventure. In the readings that are paired together today, we see this amazing moment described by a narrator, but also by Peter naming his own experience. The narrator gives us a bare bones account of this experience, and we draw conclusions from that. But Peter? Peter gives us excitement. In his words, you can hear how this experience transformed him, how he wanted to share with others so that they wouldn't be afraid to have close encounters with the holy but also to prepare them to know that God moves us forward. We don't choose how fast or how far. God does that. Peter presented Jesus as the light, the morning star to break through the darkness of life. The light of God that transformed Jesus from the inside out spilt over into the others around him. And then the light dimmed, lessened in brightness, but its effect continued to spread. We have to be ready to let the light in. If we close ourselves up tight, if we don't stop and allow those moments of holy to soak into our souls and transform us, change us, mold us, we are missing God's gifts held out to us. What action words of God are we accepting into our living that will transform us deep within ourselves? Which words are we sharing with others? Are we opening ourselves up to the opportunities that God is inviting us into? Or are we trying to hold on to something that is part of our history and not of the future God has in store for us? When we speak of how God calls us to transform the world, are we excited? Let's do this. Let's follow Jesus to be the light shared with the world, to be transformed by God's love. Amen. Transform us as you transfigured Stood apart on tables height Lead us up our sacred mountains Search us with revealing light Lift us from where we have fallen 
full of questions filled with fright. Transform us as you transfigured, once spoke with those holy ones. We surrounded by the witness of the saints whose work is done, live in this world as your body, chosen daughters, chosen sons. Transform us as you transfigured, would not stay within a shrine. Keep us from our great temptation, time and truth we quickly bind. Lead us down those daily pathways, where our love is not confined. Get up. Don't be afraid. These words of Jesus brought the disciples back into the real world. From this, they would return to care for God's people, and Jesus would tell them that the smallest amount of faith would help them do great work. Let's not be afraid to offer what we have to do great work in the world. Even the smallest amount of time or treasure combined with the gifts of others can make a huge difference. We are so very grateful for those who support our church and the hospitality and work within its walls and in the community. We do our best to honor your gifts as we strive to share God's light in the world. What can I do? What can I bring? What can I say? What can I sing? I'll sing with joy. I'll say a prayer. I'll bring my love. I'll do my share. What can I do? What can I bring? What can I sing? What can I sing? I'll sing with joy. Can I sing? I'll sing with joy. I'll say a prayer. I'll bring my love. I'll do my share. Please join your hearts and voices with mine in the prayers of God's people for God's people. Holy One, you come to us in clouds, in mountaintops, on the prairies, in the oceans, and in the deserts. You come to us and inspire us and empower us to be your light spreading throughout the world. We pray for your world, which seems to put up so many walls, which often is centered on self which clings to things that hold back your love. We pray for a world transformation which would open up possibilities, which would look forward and see the need and the hope, which would love as you love. May this be a holy transformation. We pray for your world, which is unfairly shared, where food and opportunity are unfairly divided, where power is used as a weapon. We pray for a world that lives good sharing, that recognizes the needs of all, 
that works on problems together. May this be a holy transformation. We pray for your world, where sorrow and loss and grief creep into many dark corners, where souls are shattered by violence and disaster. We pray for a world that is compassionate and caring, that picks up the broken and invites healing again and again. May this be a holy transformation. We pray for ourselves, knowing that we are not perfect, knowing that we don't always make the space we should to invite you in. We pray for ourselves that we will let your light in and out of the cracks of our lives, that we will let your courage and strength fill our minds and hearts, that we will be unafraid to follow your ways and spread your love in all places and spaces. May this be a holy transformation. Amen. In every journey, may we encounter the Christ. On every mountaintop, may we see God's light leading us, holding us, surrounding us. In every story, may we hear God's love, and in every moment, may we be ready for the transforming power of God. We are God's beloved. Thanks be to God. We have come at Christ's own bidding to this high and holy place where we wait with hope and longing for some token of God's grace. Here we pray for new assurance that our faith is not in vain, searching like those first disciples for a sign both clear and plain. Light breaks in upon our darkness, Splendor based the flesh joined word Moses and Elijah marvel as the heavenly voice is heard eyes and hearts behold with wonder how the land prophets meet with garments drenched in brightness stands transfigured and complete strengthened by this glimpse of glory fearful lest our faith decline we like Peter Find it tempting to remain and build a shrine, but true worship gives us courage to proclaim what we profess, that our daily lives may prove us people of the God we bless. This is the light of Christ shining into all of the corners of the earth, showing us where we are and where we are meant to be. The Spirit of God breathed in 
and know that God is indeed with us wherever we go. Amen.